Hey everybody, Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. All I have to say for really in, as far as the intro is concerned, when springtime decides to say, I'm here and you gotta deal with it, this is what usually happens. <laughs> Five days straight of slight risk and even an enhanced risk thrown in there with the potential for maybe a second one to come into play here. In fact, today originally started out as a marginal risk and now we have two marginal risk areas and a chance for a slight risk here. I do think that for this marginal risk over here towards I were we're about done. The storms really fired more so earlier in the day. This is that same setup that was causing a lot of wind damage over here towards Nebraska and Kansas. If we actually go back to some of the reports from yesterday, while it wasn't a lot, we had 46 wind reports, all almost all of them in Nebraska. No tornado reports, just strictly wind, which is pretty impressive for a cold core setup we still have the potential for that cold core setup to cause more trouble once more but really it's going to be on the southern sector towards the tail end where we have that chance for some severe storms got enough forcing and we got a little bit more moisture available this time for today's setup which we'll get into momentarily this is what our slight risk is looking like it's a very small area right here but there is a five percent tornado threat to go along with it wind threats actually the marginal threat this time and then the hail threat is actually up to 15 percent this time tough to say whether or not this verifies is a very conditional type of threat at this point if you ask me but kinematically and thermodynamically setup does pass if you ask me like i said we'll get into that a little bit further in just a moment here but this is where we start to really have business pick up here and this is heading into tomorrow our enhanced risk here has a 30% hail threat. This is the main reason why we have that hatch risk as well. We have a large hail threat and we could see hail greater than two inches in diameter here, stretching all the way from Shreveport back towards even Lubbock, Dallas, Wichita Falls, you're in there as well. Fort Sill, Oklahoma, we can't disinclude you. And then also we have Lufkin, Waco, and Abilene in that hatch risk as well. Wind threats at 15%. I do think there's potential for that to be maybe upgraded to a 30 or maybe have a hatched. Tornado threat I'm a little less certain about, but even so, still a 5% area. Potential to upgrade is there. Like the setup looks pretty solid if you ask me, but right now I'm kind of on the fence about whether I would predict this being upgraded to a 10% or not. Again, more details to come on that as well and then of course we have the following day which looks pretty similar here can't necessarily get a look at all of the hazard types of course because we're in that 72 hour time frame instead of 48 but even so looking at the probabilistic outlook we have that hatched risk as well and also that same setup still looks pretty much identical so for the most part i still think all hazards are possible may see a little bit of a shift to the east with this as time goes on but we'll have to see how things pan out here and then days four through eight we have two more slight risks to look at here this is that same storm system all of these slight risks here from monday onward are all from the same storm system so we eventually see this move off to the east here very broad area for this slight risk as well potential for this to be upgraded too but i'm thinking at this point we'll start to shift more to a damaging wind threat maybe some tornadoes possible hail threat will start to drop off at this point but if you're over towards dothan alabama to the west of tallahassee and then eventually all the way through just about the entire state of Mississippi, including, of course, Jackson, Greenville and others and Biloxi all the way through the entire state of New Orleans and southern Arkansas. We could see a, another threat for severe weather once again. Also a threat that's kind of been undermined just a little bit. And I'm going to try to make sure I implement that in this video is the flood threat over the next few days. Check the bottom left corner here. But very clear to me that we are going to see multiple days of rain over the same areas and potentially significant rainfall too so that flood threat is very real at this point then after day six and seven we finally get a break only to see day eight have predictability too low once again so we'll be back on the grind from that point it's severe season you guys all right so taking a look at the wind profile this is our current storm system this was also responsible for the severe weather we had yesterday 46 wind reports occurred from this storm system here 
a lot of uh, significant wind gusts were reported as well we had a couple 70 mile per hour reports from nebraska here but this is what's going to be the catalyst behind our severe weather setup here you can see that indication here with the con the evidence of a uh, diffluence and also some confluence as well right along that Illinois, Kentucky line in particular is going to be what I think is the point of interest. Maybe towards southern Illinois as well, heading towards Indiana, we could see a little bit of action, but I think the greatest threat is just going to be a little further to the south where that moisture is going to end up being at. The key limiting factor for yesterday said it was actually moisture, and as you'll see in a little bit here, that actually isn't going to be as much of an issue today. So with enough forcing, we'll have plenty of severe weather for the setup today. And then as we look at tomorrow's setup, this trough is going to work its way out of here. It's actually going to get kicked out of here by this trough. So yes, trough, trough ejection coming into play here. And what we'll end up seeing as a result is increased amount of forcing with this trough is going to a lot for severe weather potential on Monday. I think hail threat, of course, will still be the main threat due to not incredible forcing but sufficient forcing that forcing intensifies the following day so i think tuesday might be the bigger day out of the two so far not entirely clear yet but i can see some indicators that would favor that that look so far or that scenario so to speak then as we go into wednesday we see a pretty similar deal storms look like they could potentially even fire early in the day on wednesday and then persist throughout a good chunk of the afternoon. Then eventually as we head into Wednesday night into Thursday, we could see a round or two over towards South Georgia, towards Savannah, and then over towards Charleston before things start to clear up as we go into Thursday. And then after that point, we're gonna take a look at the weather pattern as a whole here. Could see some increased potential for some shower storm activity over towards Texas the next weekend. And then we have this next trough right here, which I'm actually really interested in. I've been watching this one for a couple of days now, and it's kind of piqued my interest. So right between the 14th and through the 16th or even the 17th, there could be a couple of chances of severe weather with this setup, depending on if this continues to verify or not. We're really looking for a trend at this time frame now once we're at above 200 hours out. That being said here, we'll watch that move along and you can see along with the gfs here over to the euro on the bottom left corner we're seeing a pretty similar trend as we get past this time frame we're beyond the euro so as you can see we have a couple more troughs to come into play here depending on how the warm and the moist sector plays out with these regions will determine if there will end up being severe weather towards this region do i think it's possible at this time yes this is a very stout uh, cyclone here for sure so i'm increasingly interested in this setup here from the 18th into the 19th timing what i think is what needs to be hashed out at this point but with 288 hours to go a lot can change with that so that being said here we'll watch this storm system roll out and it looks like we may have a point after that where things look relatively fair not incredible for severe weather setup at the time being but i do think as we draw close towards the very end of that month of this upcoming month we will start to see an increase in activity as we go forward here so one thing we'll do now is go ahead and look at our moisture return this is what we're looking at at current time and as you can see key difference between yesterday we were getting dew points that were sub 40s, even a few 50s here and there in regards to what was happening over towards Nebraska. Definitely a much more moisture rich environment over here towards our point of interest for severe weather. There could be a little bit of variance with this as well. That moisture could ascend a little bit further to the north. So we could see maybe even a few 60 degree dew points over here towards southern Illinois here. So we'll have to watch that as time goes on. But conditions are right here for a few severe storms maybe a tornado is possible we'll have to see how things pan out here and then as we go into the following day look at how the moisture return kicks up over here towards southeastern texas and into central texas this is what's going to be a big factor in regards to our severe weather development here the thing with severe weather is as you continue to go forward 
even if one parameter isn't necessarily incredible, if you have enough abundance of other parameters, you can overcome that. But it seems like everything's kind of in place at this point for the setup here. But as we go into Wednesday, we see even more rich Gulf moisture coming into play. And this is going to be prevalent with this entire setup here. So like I said, with the rainfall threat and the kinematic and also the thermal profiles here, all hazards are really in play for most of the week until we get into Wednesday. Then things become a little bit more unclear and then Thursday as well. So as that storm system rolls out, notice how the dew points drop off and then we get our moisture return once again. But that next storm system, which I'm increasingly becoming more intrigued with as I look at it more, I see this little dry slot right here, right behind that moisture, which is also kind of a signal that we could be getting it. We could be in for a pretty big setup here. Like I said, I don't wanna overhype this because of how far out we are, but the signals that I'm seeing so far do get my attention for sure that contrast between the moist sector and the dry sector that sometimes you will get on the south side of a cyclone like this definitely kind of leans into my thought process there for sure so as we continue to go forward we see a still very broad prevalent moist sector coming into play and the temperatures kind of coincide along with that on the bottom left so with that in mind here I think that the weather pattern over the course of the next couple of weeks is still going to be pretty active. Severe weather may be variable. We may see more robust risk. We may see more marginal risk, but a threat is definitely there for sure. I guess the last thing we'll do now is go ahead and take a look at what our simulated radar is showing us right now based off of the information available. Now, keep in mind that this is only what we are looking at right now, this current model run which updates every six hours. So what we're looking at now, especially as we get further out in the range, will look entirely different possibly by tomorrow, if not by the next run. But here's our severe weather setup for Monday. We go back a little further. Here's our severe setup for today. Not a long duration event by any stretch. Monday looks a little bit different with that. We see a couple different rounds coming into play here. And then Wednesday, we finally see this push off to the east here. Then after that, we could see additional severe weather possible towards the Florida, towards the Florida Peninsula, right around the Big Bend too, and then over towards South Carolina briefly. And then we'll watch this roll out of here. Next system comes in right behind that. And look how broad this area of interest is. Keep in mind, the warm sector that we discussed, mainly gonna be around this region here, along with the moist sector as well. So I'm thinking right now, even though we're nearly 10 days out, this is gonna be our point of interest. Now, it will be ironic if they actually do issue that on the day eight risk. But like I said, that it takes a lot of confidence to be able to do that. And right now, like I said before, we're mainly looking at only about one or two models at a time here. So as we continue to move forward, pretty much a similar deal. We could have a couple chances of severe weather with that setup here. Also quite a wintry side exists with this setup as well could have a couple more chances of your weather to follow it leading up to April 20th and then after that as we get into the day itself we could see some shower and storm activity but nothing that's screaming to me that major severe weather setup thankfully so after that looks like the weather picture looks pretty quiet of course we're looking 16 days out and this is very much variable and apt to change here but Pretty much just a quick general rundown of what we have possible over the next couple of weeks here. Make sure you have that notification bell on to be notified of every forecast video and every live stream that we do because I get the feeling we're going to be doing a lot of them throughout the month here. With that being said, thank you guys for tuning in. Appreciate you and I will see you again very soon. We may even go live today with the current setup we have now. So, like I said... Just make sure you have that notification bell on hit that like button also hit that subscribe button if you're new around here that being said take care i'll see you later whether it's today or tomorrow but it's entire metalhead weatherman take care and enjoy the rest of your sunday